Do you want to make this electric shader in Blender? There are a few tutorials to make electric effects, but this is a procedural method working off of a simple plane shader. I'm sure you will find applications for it, like electric arcs or radial electric effects. Now let's get started. First, we'll say goodbye to our dear CubeSan. Create a plane, go to the shading tab, create a new material, add a mix shader, transparent BSDF and emission nodes. Plug the nodes as I'm doing. Now we'll add a wave texture and press Ctrl T to add a mapping node. In your material property, under blend mode, select alpha blend. In your render property, select bloom. Feel free to crank up your emission value. Higher the value is, the stronger your bloom effect will be. Add another wave texture and change from sine to triangle. Connect that second wave texture to the same mapping node as the first one. Add another mapping node after the first wave texture and connect the texture to the location input of the mapping node and the texture coordinate to the vector. Add a math node and set it to compare. Now we want to play with the scale value of the second mapping nodes and compare values to get a sort of sinusoidal shape. Feel free to copy the same values as me as a baseline and modify it to get what you want. The epsilon value of the compare will control the thickness of the shape. Also reduce the distortion value of the first wave texture to something low for now. We may tweak that after, but for now we want to make it simple. If you reduce your scale value, this will increase your period to use the mathematical term and you will get less wave cycles. Now duplicate that second mapping node and connect it to your compare node. Take your second texture, the triangle one, and connect it to the location of that now third mapping node. This will add another wave following the sinusoidal signal. And if you increase the scale value of the texture, you should start seeing sharp peaks and variations. Now we want to be able to manage the amplitude of the signal. For that, add a math node after each wave texture and set it to multiply. The multiply after your sine texture will control the amplitude of the overall sinusoidal signal, while the one after the triangle texture will control the amplitude of the triangle shapes. I know I said to put a low value for the distortion value of your sine texture, but now we want to make the sinusoid imperfect. So increase that distortion value, maybe something around 3. In general, electric colors are blue, so I'll tweak my emission color uh, for change. All right, now we want to animate these effects. Electric effects usually blinks, they are visible two frames and invisible one frame. And for that, we will add a math node and set it to, guess what? Yes, another sign. Add a color mix node and set it to multiply. Connect your compare nodes to the B inputs and the output to your mix shader factor. I haven't done it yet on screen, but increase your factor value of your color mix nodes to one. Now let me explain what it does. Sign will basically alternate between white and black values following a sinusoidal wave, which means that on black values, we will have a transparent effect thanks to our transparent BSDF and our blend mode. Let's test it and add a driver to that sign in the value adds pound frame. This will increase your value on the basis of your frame number. If you press play, you should see your effect blinking. The problem we have now is that it alternates between white, gray and black values, which makes the effect sort of shading and it blinks on an even ratio, as many frames in a visible state than on the invisible state. But for our effect, we want to make it visible twice more than it is invisible. So my trick is to add a color ramp, set it to constant, and set the black value at 0.5. This will make your effect constantly switching between plain black and white values, so no more gray. And this will change the frequency to a two-third ratio, meaning twice more visible than it is invisible. But we're not done yet. I want the effect to be visible for only two frames and invisible for only one frame. Currently, it is something around 4 and 2. So right-click on the sign nodes, edit driver, 
and in the expression multiply your frame value by 2. This will speed up your effect by 2. And if you check, you should now have your effect visible on two frames and invisible on one. Go back to your first mapping nodes and animate the X value to give it a sort of motion. For that, similarly to before, add a pound frame driver. This is basically it for the effects, but let me show you a few other cool things we can do. Shift A, curve, add a path. In edit mode, I'm extruding a few more points to make it obvious. Go back to your plane and in the modifier tab, add an array modifier. Set the fit type to fit curve and select the curve you created. Then add a curve modifier and select again the curve you created. Now you can edit your curve to follow the path you want and we can create cool arc effect. But I haven't shown you yet how to make this effect on a radial. Shift A, create a cylinder, give it the same material as previously, but create a new instance of it. So you don't mess up with the one applied to your plane. Then tweak your compare value to center it. Go to edit mode and delete the top and bottom faces. I'll select the bottom edges, scale it up on the z-axis, make it larger and scale it up again on the z-axis to make it flat. You should have a flat disk with a hole in the middle. If you animate the value of your compare nodes, you can make your effects radially expand. You can duplicate this effect and rotate it over to give it a spherical effect so you can use it in a 3D space. From now on, you can use your imagination for whatever application you may find. And that wraps up this video. Hope you enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe for more Blender contents. Ciao.